I just revealed Toyota's internal combustion engine hydrogen vehicles, which apparently have exploded. And also Toyota's plan to work on being a global oil producer. What do I mean? Well, they want to produce synthetic fuels and they're partnering with the world's biggest oil company to do so. They say that they're clean. Well, we all know that that's a, a fabricate. Well, we all know that that's a fabrication. In addition to those facts, Toyota say that hydrogen is a key pillar to their future. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. And as the name implies, Electric Viking, I don't really care too much about hydrogen. I've debunked the merits of hydrogen many times. It's inefficient. It's simply not going to be part of the future of cars, of the automotive landscape. Mercedes are still working on it. Yep, I just found that out yesterday. Um, BMW still are. And the truth is, a lot of people don't realize this, but these car companies and others have been working on hydrogen-powered vehicles now for more than 34 years. It's not some kind of new technology that is just around the corner from being miraculously compelling. But Toyota says that hydrogen remains a key pillar and will play a role in differentiating Toyota from rival car manufacturers in the future, according to Toyota Motor Group Europe President and CEO Matt Harrison. Now, keep in mind, Toyota needs to actually have a future for that to happen. You might think that's ridiculous, right? I mean, that's what people used to think back when Nokia was the biggest manufacturer in the world of mobile phones. Yeah, I mean, Nokia do technically still exist. No one cares, though. No one cares at all. That could be what happens here. Now, currently, yes, Toyota is the biggest manufacturer of cars in the world. But keep in mind, they do have $200 billion in debt. And almost all of that is bad debt. Now, when I say bad debt, well, Volkswagen Group have nearly that much debt as well. But a lot of the Volkswagen Group's debt is financial services debt, meaning loans that have to be paid back to them. Toyota, on the other hand, almost all of their debt is bad. And Toyota is the most indebted company in the history of mankind. Uh, that is not an exaggeration. That's actually true. So all this investment going on in all these different areas by Toyota, hydrogen internal combustion engine vehicles, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, hydrogen trucks and pickups and all that sort of thing, plus hybrids, plug-in hybrids, normal hybrids, magic hybrids that can self-fuel, self-charge themselves and drive forever. Apparently that's what they do. Uh, and fully electric cars. Plus, they're still working on internal combustion engine technology. Do you think maybe they're spread a little bit thin? That's what I think. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Underlining the firm's commitment to hydrogen, it's in fuel cell and combustion applications. Harrison said, we have a hydrogen division and assembly facilities. And as demand ramps up, prices will come down. We see a lot of opportunities there. So this boss of Toyota in Europe is saying that as demand ramps up for their hydrogen powered cars in Europe, the prices will come down. Do you see that happening anytime soon, seeing as Toyota has been selling hydrogen cars now for many years? Demand hasn't changed at all in Europe. It's barely moved the needle. I think this is the absolute epitome of delusion. But hey, I could be wrong. Let me know what you think. Because of that, I see the technology as a key pillar of our future. I see it as a key pillar in our future in a way that hybrid is now. Harrison also indicated his support for the mooted switch to hydrogen power for the World Endurance Championship when it updates its rules in 2026. We are trying to utilize motorsport, and I suspect there is a real possibility of hydrogen being adopted. Although there are still some questions on the feasibility of it around tank sizes, the weight issues, and recharging. But the progress has been strong, and we need to keep working on it. So we will continue to invest money that we don't have into the future of hydrogen cars at Toyota Motor Corporation. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think if you're investing in Toyota, I, I think you're crazy. Uh, there are people, there's a lot of people, a lot of mum and dad investors invested in Toyota. They believe the oh, what a feeling, the marketing, you know, a lot of money spent on my, on by Toyota on marketing to convince people that their products are amazing. I see these comments all the time. Toyota reliability. Toyota has amazing reliability. Well, when I was 20 years old, I actually broke four Toyota engines in a row uh, in different cars. Yeah, for me, well, they weren't so reliable. Since then, I've tracked the history of Toyota's recalls. My friends, 
if you really think Toyota Motor is reliable, then you're simply not paying attention. Uh, I'm sorry if that's offensive, but it's just a fact. Toyota has had so many court cases, recalls, forced recalls, and massive buybacks ever since I first broke five engines that I really don't understand this whole delusion of Toyota vehicles being incredibly reliable. Yeah, some of them are, some of them are brilliant. But what about Toyota's diesel vehicles? They've been a catastrophe, an absolute nightmare for the company. They've had so many recalls and customers absolutely hate them. Why? Because they are terrible. That's the truth. Now, I think if Toyota really put their, head, their heads to work and they put all their genius engineers together, they say they have the best in the world, and they really tried to focus hard on one thing, making compelling electric cars. I think if they had have done that since they broke up with Tesla back in 2017, then today we would have compelling, affordable, impressive electric cars from Toyota. But they haven't. They're doing things all over the place willy-nilly. And that is a recipe for disaster.